Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John, St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us again as we continue our series looking at the Augsburg Confession of 1530, that statement of faith presented to Emperor Charles V as he was trying to bring the empire back together, trying to unite the, the Lutherans uh, in Germany with the Catholics in the rest of his empire and trying to build that unity. And so uh, the Lutheran princes stood up and said, this is what we believe. We're happy to support the empire, but, but uh, you cannot command our faith. And so they stated what they believed. Uh, and interesting to note that as the Augsburg Confession was being read, those Lutheran princes stood up and remained standing the entire time. It wasn't a short time for them to read the entire Augsburg Confession. We are going to pick back up now. Uh, we took a, a little bit of a, a break. We jumped ahead, I should say, to Article 26. Uh, after going in order from Articles 1 through 6, we jumped to 26. We're going to come back and get back in order now and look at Article number 7, which is about the church. Article number 7, about the church. We confess that in the Apostles' Creed. Whenever we confess the Apostles' Creed, we confess something about the church. What do we say? We say, uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Now, Catholics might hear that and say, well, that's not what we say. You've changed the words. And yes, it's true, guilty as charged, the words that, uh, that I think the Catholic Church uses is, uh, we, uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. They would use the word Catholic. And the word Catholic means uh, universal. So as a word, we would agree with that. We, we believe in the universal church, the Catholic Church in that sense. Of course, the problem is when you use the word Catholic, uh, because the more prominent thought, when somebody hears the word Catholic, they think of the Roman Catholic Church. And so, uh, to try to be more clear about what it is we believe about, about the church, uh, we, we choose to use the word Christian instead of Catholic, which means universal. So what did the Lutheran confessors state as their faith? what they believe about the church. Article 7, about the church. Our churches also teach that there is and always will be one holy church. The church is the gathering of all believers in which the gospel is purely preached and the holy sacraments are properly administered. For true unity in the church, it is enough to agree, to agree about the teaching of the gospel and the use of the sacraments. It is not necessary that human traditions, that is, rituals or church ceremonies that have been set up by humans, should be the same everywhere. As Paul says, one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Quoting from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Sometimes uh, we'll talk about the invisible church. The invisible church in the sense that uh, you can't see the faith that is in somebody's heart. And yet uh, the church really is made up of all of those who believe in Jesus as their Savior, who, who believe in the gospel, the good news of what God has done for them. Now, as we strive for unity in the church, the Lutheran confessors recognize that we don't have to have agreement in, in these outward forms, in these, in these church traditions. And, and yes, as Lutherans, we have church traditions too. And the Catholics have their church traditions. Uh, just about every church has a number of traditions that they follow. And we don't necessarily have to agree in all of those. In the last video, I talked about uh, the practice of, well, Fat Tuesday. And if somebody chooses to, uh, to fast or to 
uh, during the season of Lent to abstain from certain foods, if somebody chooses to do that, they are free to do that. And, and I don't want to poke fun at anybody who does that. Uh, but the issue comes when a church body requires it and teaches it as being meritorious, as if by abstaining from a certain kind of food, you are meriting earning something from God, earning a little bit of salvation, earning uh, a little bit of the way to heaven. And that is where the teaching comes up against the gospel. The gospel, which is that good news of what God has done for you to save you, that your salvation was purchased by Jesus Christ on the cross. Your salvation is given to you as a free gift, apart from works, as we've said in previous lessons, that our salvation is is given to us uh, and, and not earned by doing works. And so if somebody chooses to abstain from food, that's fine. If it's something that, that helps you to focus your, thought on, your thoughts on your Savior during the time of Lent, go ahead. Do that. You're welcome to do it. You have that Christian freedom to do so. But don't think that by doing works, you are earning your way to heaven in any way. Because Jesus has earned the way to heaven for you. And so that is what the Lutheran confessors were were talking about. When they talk about true unity in the church, if we can just agree on that, that we are saved by grace alone and not by works, if we can just agree on on the the importance of the sacraments and, and how those sacraments ought to be administered, that... The sacraments are gifts of God to the church. And we'll, we'll talk about the sacraments uh, further down the road. But this is a place, too, where uh, as a Lutheran church, uh, we don't have unity with so many of the evangelical churches because they deny the power of baptism. They deny that the Holy Spirit is able to work faith in the heart of a child through the waters of baptism. They deny that... The the Holy Spirit actually works salvation in the sacrament. They deny so often uh, the the presence of the body and blood of Jesus, that miraculous presence of the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so we don't have unity uh, when it comes to those things, and and which is why we have uh, various church denominations. But nevertheless, as Christians, we desire that unity. We want to strive for that unity as a church to proclaim what God's word teaches about the gospel, about the sacraments, uh, and, and of course, everything else connected with those. And so, brothers and sisters, rejoice that God has made you, first of all, members of his holy Christian church by bringing you to faith in Jesus as your Savior. That is the only way we have a place in his kingdom, in his church, in his family. It's through the adoption that we have through Jesus Christ, through the payment he made for us on the cross when he took our sins upon himself and paid for them by his own sacrifice, his own death, his own suffering and death. Next week, we will examine the church a little bit more with article number eight, what the church is. Until then, dear friends, God's blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. For builders bold whose vision pure saw more than brick or stone, who laid in hope foundation sure with Christ the cornerstone. For those who honored your commands and trusted your strong word, who offered faithful hearts and hands, we give you thanks.
songs, O Lord. As here they raised a sword ring spire, which thrust toward worlds above, so may your prayers like tongues of fire leap kindled by your love. And let your living word descend a seed on waiting hearts, and fruitful there its grace extend to earth's most distant parts. Here, saints newborn, you generate through water and the word. Through bread and cup communicate the gift of Christ the Lord. We gather Christ's own family, Christ's meal of love we share. Come help us live in unity, each other's burdens bear. We come, O Lord, in heritors from those whose work is done. Lord, make us now contributors to years beyond our own. Let faith's unkindled flame not fail. Let love's best gifts increase. Let hope in Christ your word prevail till earth and time shall cease.